Hey guys, in this video, what I'm going to try to do is to walk you through solutions for A15 the way I would like you to do them. Um, it's going to be really important as we do these basic worksheets here at the beginning of the year that you get the strategy down for how to organize information and how to show your work. So that's what a lot of this is about. These worksheets are easy. The problems should be pretty straightforward for you, and I hope you're getting them right as you go. But the quality of your work is huge. So take a minute. Go ahead and look at how I set these things up. If you want to speed through the video and, and, and just check the answers, that's perfectly fine. But I am going to be grading you on do you set up problems using LEPS and are you showing your work in a really um, consistent way. So let's go. So Australian Dragonfly holds the insect world speed record at 16 meters per second. How long would it take to cover 100 meters for each one of these problems? You're going to write down DVT. And what we're going to do is take the information they give you. So I just hop on this number right here, 100 meters. I know that's a distance. I also look at this 16 meters per second, and I know it's got units of speed, so it's a velocity. I write down my formula, d equals vt, and I look that time is what I'm after, so we just do a little division by v. So t equals d over v, and that's going to give me 100 meters over 16 meters per second. And that comes out to equal, what the heck was it? It was pretty, I have my calculator over here, 6.25 uh, seconds to cover 100 meters. Um, thing worth noticing, all these units over here were in standard form. I didn't have to do any converting. But like we said, that's one of the reasons why you want to do a good list, because it really gives you a place to sort out uh, information like that. So this next question, same thing, DVT. Let's go see what info they give us. Same 100 meters, this time it's Usain Bolt running it, and he can do it in 9.58 seconds. So you notice that's a longer time than the, than the dragonfly by far. Same kind of problem, D equals VT. This time we solve it for V though. So divide both sides by T, and we get T, uh, V rather, come here, equals D over T. So 100 meters over 9.58 seconds. And we get that Usain Bolt went 10.4 meters per second. So fastest man alive, that's pretty quick. Um, how many times faster is the dragonfly than Usain Bolt? This is not an LEPS question. You should know from math class when they ask you something like how many times, that's going to be a division. They really want us to form a ratio out of that. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. Well, actually, there, there actually is. When they say the dragonfly as compared to, the dragonfly should go on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put dragonfly speed on top. So 16 meters per second uh, over 10.4 meters per second. And it actually gives us 1.53. So I was wrong about there being no particular way. There is. Uh, dragonfly is 53% faster than Usain Bolt. Okay? So on our tour of things that go fast, um, the space shuttle uh, was one of the quickest things that was ever thrown into orbit, 77 odd hundred meters per second. So when we do D, V, and T, that's going to go right there for the V, 7780 meters per second. And the question says, if you let this thing fly for 90 minutes, how far would it go? So they're looking for a D. You should notice, though, that the T isn't a standard label. So this is a place where you want to do a little factor label conversion. So 60 seconds, make that legible. It is equal to one minute, and that turns out to be 5,400 seconds. And then we're done with the list. So the equation is d equals vt. Don't need to do any algebra, so then we could just jump right to the plug-in stage. So 7,780 meters per second times 5,400. And I'm going to have to double check what I wrote down over here. Oh, that's a big number. Let's go for 54 seconds, and that's going to be a walloping 42 million uh, 12,000 meters is the distance the space shuttle would go. Okay, so the first four are done. If you're setting them up the right and you're feeling confident, then you're probably on the right track. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and finish off the last few here. This one is about a spacecraft you may never have heard of. The Helios is an old one, but it, it, uh, it was a thing we launched directly towards the sun, and it collected a lot of data until it got so close that it burned. So it 
really sent a lot of information, interesting information though about how the sun varies in this thing they call the heliosphere that we actually live inside of. Particles from the sun reach the earth all the time. And it was interesting to study that and see how big it was and see how it varied over space. So anyway, this thing was hecka quick. So 67,750, 68,750 meters per second is the speed. How long would it take to go around the Earth if it ever did that? Uh, and the, the distance there was 40,000 kilometers around the Earth. So here's a chance to pause. I see kilometers are not a standard unit. And what I'm going to do is either the super simple conversion, where I just nuke the km, and I put in times 10 to the 3 in its place. Or I'll do it by factor label this time because I'm on paper and it just seems like it's easier to, to watch uh, for you if I do it that way. A thousand meters is the same as one kilometer. Kilometers cancel. And either way you slice it, you're going to end up with 40 million meters of distance when you put it in the standard units. Anyway, we go same as we did above. T equals D over V. D is 40 million meters. Velocity 68,750 meters per second, and not that long. The answer is 581.8 seconds. So it would take this thing around, I don't know, not quite uh, 10 minutes to cruise around the entire planet Earth, do one loop. Okay. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get the last couple. Six is a pretty straightforward one. Baseball pitcher uh, throws, that's a pretty fast fastball. That's around 100 miles an hour fastball. Um, D is 18 meters. This one's kind of considerate, right? Because they gave us the units already in metric form in standard units. So we can just jump right to the problem solving. T equals D over V. And D is going to be 18 meters. 41.7 meters per second. And you get the time, and this is really amazing when you think about hitters being able to actually hit, hit a batted ball, particularly a breaking ball, because you have about a half a second as a batter from the time the ball leaves at 100 miles an hour until the time it gets to home plate. It's not a lot of time. So to be able to pick up the rotation of a ball and put a, put a swing on the ball, it's, it's not easy to do. That's why people guess. Finally, if you left this question blank, kind of you shouldn't. Shame on you. Um, sometimes physics problems aren't really hard. They're just, they're just things that are chained together. And that's true in real life, too. So um, you'll see it in this easy problem here. Batter hits a baseball, travels to the center fielder. What I'm going to do, since we're after the total time it takes for all these different things to happen, is I'm going to call that time one. So you've seen us do this before. Time one is a time, so I'm going to call it T. And one is just called a subscript. It's just a, just a label. So the center fielder then holds the ball for 1.6 seconds. That's going to be my T2 in the problem the second time. And then finally, the center fielder throws the ball back in uh, some distance at some speed. And that's all right there is going to give me time three. And to figure out the total time in three organized parts, all I have to do is just really write two problems because they give us one of the times for, for free. So the first distance that they gave us was 175 meters. And I can just write a D1 on that, maybe, um, which just indicates that it's one at the first distance for the first part of the problem. So V1, let's go check that, was 45 meters per second. And then T1 is the time it took. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of algebra. So T equals D over V, like we've done a couple times now, 175 meters divided by 45 meters per second. And that ball would be in the air for 3.89 seconds is what that looks like, okay? And that's T1, so 3.89, if you're keeping score, goes down there. T2 they gave to us for free, like we said before. So T2 is just 1.6 seconds. So the center fielder holds the ball, uh, just celebrates for a little minute in his own head, and then throws the ball back in. So throwing the ball back in is this part right here. So center fielder throws the ball at a speed of 40 meters per second. Second baseman is 140 meters away. It's a big ballpark, by the way. And then uh, lastly, we're looking for the T. Same as we did before. So 140 meters 
over 40 meters per second comes up with what was it? It wasn't 1.6 that was 3.5 that's what that was 3.5 seconds and so all you do uh, to get the total time is just add them all together so total time is 8.99 seconds okay the upshot of the whole thing your work really should look like this work I'm not cutting any corners but I'm not doing anything extra here um, it's really important to use your labels you notice I'm using my labels here in the formulas I'm showing my algebra that's the way as we get to harder problems that you're going to earn partial credit if you need it but it's also key to be organized as you start out the year in physics it's one of the biggest things you're going to do that's going to help you succeed uh, during the year we're going to have so anyway i hope that was helpful um, we're looking forward to seeing you again in real life real soon and take care of yourself and have a good day bye bye